The Giants and the Dodgers, a rivalry that started on the East Coast and moved west and has stood the test of time. Two of baseball's oldest franchises with memorable players providing magical moments. The rivalry lives on as both teams hope for a return trip to the playoffs. And like so many times before, the Giants and Dodgers could take the race for the West right down to the wire. Game three of the series, and it's coming up next. We've got afternoon baseball here in Southern California. A nice day for the rivalry. Game three of this four-game series, Giants and Dodgers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants are two for two in the first two games in this series. Well-played games, well-pitched games, and that's what the Giants are looking for this afternoon from Matt Cain. Well, Matt came before he went on the disabled list, was throwing great baseball, and we expect it to continue today. In fact, we expect it to be all about pitching today. His opponent, Zach Greinke, has not even given up any more than two runs in any of his starts. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the Giants' entire pitching staff in the month of May, their ERA is 2.24, so it figures to be about pitching. And when that happens, as hitters, you have to take advantage of opportunity. And for the Giants, it may be in the first inning. Be ready when it happens, and that will be the key today. All right, Buster Posey at first. Hector Sanchez behind the dish. It's all about pitching today. Matt Kane on the hill for the Giants. Zach Greinke on the mound for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Stay tuned. We'll take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do that right after this.
Giants Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. It's Jack's hottest sandwich yet. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Yeah, you're looking at the coastline here in Southern California. It's a nice day. And our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. 69 degrees here at the yard. We got winds at nine miles per hour. 64% is the humidity and it is clear. Zach Renke, he's tough in the lineup that he'll be facing. It'll be Pagan, Pence, and Posey. Morris is in the cleanup spot. Hector Sanchez, he gets the nod for the fifth slot, and he's been red hot. It'll be Sandoval, Crawford, and Hicks, and then Matt Cain will pitch in that night. On the hill today for the Dodgers will be Zach Greinke, the 10-year veteran. Greinke, 30 years old. And take a look at what he has done. He's been remarkable. 5 only, 2 three, 5 ERA. And he has a run of 19 consecutive day games going right now, which he's allowed two or fewer runs. That's the longest run in the major league since 1914. So he has been locked in. How he does it is with a fastball, two types of movement. It'll be low 90s. He will sink. He will cut it. He's got a curveball slider to change up. He has exceptional command. And he's very aggressive inside. In fact, he's got a little bit of a reputation as a headhunter. And... Uh, he is on a roll right now, as I mentioned, 19 consecutive games where he has allowed two or less. Quite remarkable. First pitch of the ball game is a call strike, so we get started right on time at 1:10 with Pagan taking a call strike. Pagan hitting 316. Rolls this one on the ground to Gonzalez. And Gonzalez to Brinkley, and that's how this game gets started. On a 3 1 put out. Take a look at the defense playing behind Granky today for the Dodgers, starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Crawford, Kemp, and Puy. Great arms in center and right, no arm in left. Ramirez and Figgins on the left side of the infield. Gordon and Gonzalez on the right side, and Drew Butera will be in the squad putting down the signs. Granky 1 0 lifetime and three career starts against the Giants. Here's Hunter Pence. Pence three for 13 lifetime against Grinky. He does have a couple of home runs against Grinky. 0 for 2 last night as he looks at a strike. This is Mark Carlson calling balls and strikes. And Carlson has a big zone from knees to the to the chest and he will give high strikes. He didn't have a lot of uh, corners, but uh, basically if you to qualify him as a a little flare to right. This could be trouble. It is trouble. And Pence is going to have motor for two and make it. So a flare for a double for Hunter Pence. Time now for our Nissan keys to the game. And for the Giants, you got to take what Grinke gives you. I mean, he's a control specialist. And you can't be stubborn. If he's going to pitch away, go that way. And at number two, keep the big boys in the yard, Matt Kane. There's a lot of power in this Dodger lineup. You got to keep them in the yard. Those are our Nissan keys to the game. Finish up, finishing up our comments on Mark Carlson. It will be a smaller strike zone than what you could see at the end of the, of the game. It, it, it will expand, provided you show him you can throw strikes. And both guys today are strike throwers, so I expect this zone to be pretty big by around the fourth or fifth inning. Here's Buster Posey. 0 for 2 on Thursday. Last night, Buster Posey went 1 for 4. And he takes a breaking ball in the dirt. Always hustling. A pop up, and this is how you're supposed to do it. Run like you're trying to score the winning run of the World Series, and that's how he plays. And it doesn't make a difference if he's hitting the ball off the wall or if he's hitting the comeback of the pitcher. Posey 1 for 9, lifetime against Grinke. He's hitting 284. And that is a belt high fastball for a strike at 92. And that's that high strike that is a little bit off the plate away, man. It's an example of 
Carlson strike zone. And it could get bigger. Michael Morris on deck. Posey flips one out to right field. Coming in is Puig. And Puig can't hang on to it. Pence hustling to third, and he's going to make it as the ball squirts by Sean Figgins. It'll be a base hit. We did not get a great jump on him. However, I mean, he's got the kind of speed that he could make up for a bad first step. He expected a little more fly ball than what he got. And then he probably felt that he should have caught the ball. Very strong arm. So the Giants with a couple of bloops, and they got got it all set up. Ball hit just on the little finger of the glove of Puig. Yeah, it bounced right into his throwing hand and ended up making that play close at third. The throw would have been held by Figgins. It hits Hunter Pence. So here's Morris hitting at 276. And he goes around and it's no balls in one strike. He's got a home run lifetime against Grinky. He's two for eight. In the series, he does not have a hit. For three and 0 for four. And it's now behind 0 and 2. Hard slider. He's not picking up that rotation. Two times he's thrown it, two times he's gone after, tried, tried to check. I think he's got great stuff. I mean, and he's got a, a great ability to be able to command that stuff. Roughest at bats I've seen all year. Comes right back, same breaking ball, and he just cannot stop the barrel head for coming through the zone. Did he go? Yes, he did. So here's Sanchez hitting at 240, two home runs, 15 driven in. He's never faced Grinky before. Switch hitter batting left handed. And he takes down low. Throws a fastball about 54% of the time. And then everything else is about equal. The slider curveball changeup. And you might also add that he'll throw any of those in any count. It doesn't make a difference. He'll throw that curveball in a 3 0 count. I mean, he just has that type of command and that type of confidence. Sanchez got a piece, and it's one ball and one strike. And the other thing about Granke is that you'll see him cruise 90, 91, and all of a sudden, when he needs to reach back, he's got it, and he'll amp it up 94, 95. Got the first strike with 94 two seam movement running away from the left handed hitting Sanchez comes back with a changeup. And two swing and misses from Sanchez's perspective. He just can't get along with it. You can't try and think you're going to jerk up to the full side of the field. You got to take what he gives you. And having a good opposite field approach is not a bad approach against a guy like Grinke. And there aren't many guys like Grinke. Gonzalez holding on Posey. And it's wide, two and two. Pablo Sandoval waiting in the wings. Just underway here at Dodger Stadium. It's the Panda.
Frankie at the belt. Three and two. Change up, change up. Two seam grip and movement just sort of falls off the plate away from a left handed hitter. So, two pretty good takes there from Hector Sanchez's perspective. Posey will be on the move. Here's the payoff to Sanchez, and he walked him, and Sandoval is going to hit. So, that goes 0 2 to a walk. Coming to the play, number 48, Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval has never had a hit against Grinke. He's 0 for 5. And if there's ever been a guy that needs a big hit in the Giants uniform, you're looking at him. And this is an opportunity for a big hit. He's 1 for 8 in the series. Pence at third. Posey at second. Sanchez at first. And Sandoval waiting on Zach Greinke. In the dirt. Nice play Butera. One ball and no strikes. And that's exactly where he wanted to throw that curveball. Right on top of home plate. Now the. Dodgers. Look we all saw it. Sandoval swung at a fastball last night. Over his head. Literally. And he hit it. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the best swings he had all night. So Greinke's thinking I'm not even going to throw it in the strike zone on the first pitch. And there's a strike to even the count. Some paint with a fastball in the outside corner. Sandoval strong enough to hit one out the other way. I mean if. If he's looking for a fastball away, we've seen him do it. Frankie steps off, but not for very long. Sandoval thought about stepping out of the box. Everybody's ready in the 1 1 to Sandoval. Out of play, one and two. May not have been a strike. This will be the 20th pitch coming up. Pence at third. Posey at second. Hector Sanchez at first. It's one and two to Sandoval. Sandoval's numbers aren't very good once he gets two strikes on him. We'll see if he can change that here. Again, by design, break a ball in the dirt. That was a back foot curve ball. Nice block there by Drew Butera. Butera's walking out with his pitcher saying, hey, just keep throwing down the dirt. I'll keep blocking. Don't worry about me. Well, if he blocks this one, he's going to block everyone. And they have another shot to go out of the strike zone here. But really, with Sandoval, I, I, you kind of think it's you got two more shots. Yeah, they may. Go up the ladder here with a high fastball. Got him. And they're in the inning. Giants leave him loaded. Game coming out. Dodgers coming up.
For the first inning here at Dodger Stadium, Matt Cain makes his sixth start, and this is the lineup that he'll be facing. It'll be Gordon Puig and Hanley Ramirez. 72 at bats for Adrian Gonzalez against Matt Cain. Then it'll be Camp Crawford and Figgins. Butera is hitting eighth and Granky ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be Matt Cain. This will be his sixth start. He's coming off a disabled list with a cut on his index finger and his throwing hand. Still looking for win number one on the year, ERA of 4.35. He is, however, pitching great baseball, and when he pitches great baseball, you're going to see him spot the fastball all over the strike zone. He pitches as well with the fastball as just about anybody in the National League. He's also got a curveball, a slider. He'll cut the ball. He'll sink the ball, and he'll throw a changeup. Lifetime against these Dodgers. Kane 5-11 and 11 with a 3.5 ADRA. Let's take a look at the defense playing behind Matt Kane today, starting the Giants outfield from left to right. It'll be Morse. Pagan and Hunter Pence. That's your outfield. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side. Hicks and Posey on the right side. And Hector Sanchez will be in the squad putting down the signs. So D. Gordon will lead things off. Giants have done a good job of controlling Gordon. He's one for eight in the series. So much for that. Here's Gordon is a boy on one pitch. Broadcasters jinx. So Queen is coming up. We get a couple of hits in the series. So Puig at the plate. Gordon with 21 steals is at first. And that means Matt Cain is going to keep an eye on him. Now one thing about B. Gordon, he likes to go early in the count. He doesn't hang around first base too long. He goes. Sanchez throw. Not in time. 22 speed. There is nothing you can do about that type of speed. A good unload time from both Kane and Hector Sanchez. The throw just a little high. And that's all the window of opportunity Gordon needed. And Bruce Bochy's not sure. Yet. They will not review that. Giants will review it and find out that it's a no-go. And there's a sign from Ron Wotus. So a workout for Bruce Bochy. Get you running in. Now they thought he may have come off the bag. Hicks. There's a swipe tag, and then he lifts the glove out. Had he left the glove down, they may have had a, a chance to get him with him sliding over the bag with his hand and hit him on the back leg. There may have been a little window there, but he did not touch him a second time. So the Dodgers now with a runner at second base with nobody out, and Puig waits on Kane. And that pitch is outside, one ball and no strikes. <laughs> The numbers three for eight lifetime against Kane with a couple of doubles and a home run. Out of play, two balls and one strike. Hanley Ramirez is on deck.
Got to keep an eye on Gordon. Obviously. He may try to steal third. This is pop back. This was the home run last night off of Madison Bumgarner. The fastball I the bell out of the plate. He went right over the 395 sign. Flipped his bat, walked out of the box, and Madison Bumgarner said, next time you do that, I may have another opinion about what I'm gonna do. Although today the paper, Madison Bumgarner said, I just went down there and said, nice swing. Two balls, two strikes. His tongue planted in cheek. Yeah. Second, nobody out. You pitch it for a strikeout. And he gets it with a good, hard breaking ball. And Puig sent packing. Not happy. Well, look, I don't think the Dodgers have Puig hitting second to advanced runners. No. I think they have him up there to do what he just did in that swing. Haley Ramirez at 252. 0 for 4 on Thursday. 0 for 8 in the series. And a first pitch strike, and it's 0 and 1. And gets the sign from Hector Sanchez. Gordon thinking about it, and now Kane will bluff a throw. You got to pay attention to him. I mean, he'll take off. Yeah. Swipe third. He's Absolutely. Good. Very good at it. Same thing you do with holding a runner first, you have to do with holding a runner second. Vary the looks you give him, vary the times with which you unload, come quick, come set, hold it. And the runner goes, and the throw to third is going to be late. That just happened to be a really good pitch to go on. Now the really great beast Steelers have that knack of knowing when to pick a good pitch and the good pitch was a breaking ball so it doesn't get to the catcher as quickly as a fastball five for five now stealing third he's a weapon Giants will play the infield back and this is hit foul so now Kane can go for the strikeout One ball and two strikes to Hanley Ramirez, who's 13 for 46 in his career against Kane. Now the infield comes in. Did. So Ramirez gets hit. And the hitter will be Adrian Gonzalez. And the last thing they were trying to do was hit Ramirez. And way ahead in the count, one and two. They're trying to go up and in with a fastball, and that just a heat seeks right into his elbow piece. Maybe carried off and hit him in the side. Ball did not travel very far after the hit. Here's number 23, Adrian Gonzalez. 
So in the first inning, Zach Greinke had to work through some problems, and now Matt Cain is being faced with a similar challenge. Gonzalez has hit the ball well in this series. He just doesn't have anything to show for it. He's had the most at bats of anybody against King, 72. Now looking for the double play ball. And it's no balls in one strike. 92 mile on our paint on the outside corner. Kane at the belt. Ramirez does not go, and that's high and wide, and it's one ball and one strike. Ramirez has got three steals. He used to be a base stealer. He doesn't run that much anymore. Okay, well, well they have Brandon Hicks. I mean, he's really covering the hole. That, that's that's a long way to second base. And the Giants really feel like Gonzalez. There's no way he's going to hit the ball to Sandoval. One and two, unless he hits that ball on the ground. So one and two now to Adrian Gonzalez with Matt Kemp on deck. Gordon at third. Ramirez at first. Got him. Very rarely do you see Adrian Gonzalez get anxious, but he was no, just center fielder number 27. Beautiful two seam fastball. Oh, had big time tail. He really turned that ball over. And it just fell away. It looked like a left handed slider. Falling away from Gonzalez. I'm not sure if he's ever seen that type of movement from Kane. And all those 72 at bats he's had against him. So here's Kemp. Kemp at 262, four home runs, nine driven in. Posey holding on Ramirez. Kemp's got four lifetime home runs off of King. He's also got four doubles off of King. Hard to avoid Kemp when you got Kyle Crawford on deck. Uh, Kyle Crawford's been one of the hottest guys. See that. In tight, one ball and one strike. Kemp back in the box. At first is Ramirez, at third is Gordon. A Sunday night game here earlier in the year, and Kemp got him twice. He was not throwing the ball then as well as he's throwing it now. He's got much better finish, much better late movement. Mechanics are much more sound. Three and one. And he's definitely being careful of it. He has an open base. I don't think for one second that he does remember that game earlier in, the, in April. Kemp with four home runs lifetime. He ties it with just about all the leaders against him that can. Only one guy has more, and that's Tula Whiskey. I play three and two. It's 
really aggressive on the three one swing kind of just feeling his way through the strike zone definitely a different Matt Cain than we saw a couple years ago no question now here you can go to a corner here like I say if you if you walk him not the end of the world with the count three and two Ramirez will take off he goes and it's foul back. So Kemp got a challenge from Matt King. He did. 93 mile an hour fastball. You know, Matt Kemp likes to get extended. And he's a good hitter between the knees and the belt. That's what he likes. Middle away. That's his happy zone. And he'll take it out to both sides of the field. Kane in this inning has struck out Puig and Adrian Gonzalez. It's three and two. And the runner goes, and this is hit out to Hunter Pence, and Kane's going to get out of the inning, and he does. Both Greinke and Kane pitched through trouble in the first. It's nothing, nothing. For our Geico quote, we talked about the little face-off between Bumgarner and uh, Puig last night. This is what Puig, or it was what Bumgarner had to say after the incident. He said, you know, I mean, I was just congratulating him on the home run. It was a really good swing. I don't know why everybody got so mad. <laughs> That's our Geico quote of the game. Well, they asked him, what did Puig say to you? And he said, well, I, I just don't understand a lot of the Spanish. Here's Crawford. Crawford, the offensive hero last night with a two run home run. Crawford, nice swing as he laces one into left field. So Crawford to Crawford. Oh, Kai mentioned that. Brandon Crawford was the hero in last night's ball game. Well, right now, it's time for our Togo's play, big play, the Togo's way, and there was the high fastball he got off Pat Mahalam. It was a two-run shot in the fifth inning, and that put the Giants on the board. And that's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. Here's Hicks. Hicks one for seven in the series, but it was a big fly. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. The league knows that Brandon Hicks is a good fastball hitter. But you can't make any mistakes to him if you throw him something other than a fastball. 
And Beckett made a mistake, and that's the home run that he hit on Thursday night. All three Giants hits against Grinke have gone the opposite way. Really a good example of taking what he gives you. By the way, we do want to send out our congratulations to uh, to John Miller's son, Alex. Uh, Alex is getting married today. Alex and Bree. And uh, John is in Las Vegas for the wedding. As he will miss today and tomorrow. As his takes low. So a good day for the Millers. A couple yeah, of great kids. They really are. Alex and Bree, that's that's a good couple right there. You know, we always say that one of us is on assignment. Well, today we're going to tell you what the assignment was. Go enjoy your kid's wedding. We also gave him a couple of bucks to gamble with, too. Right? Yeah, a couple. The 2 1 to Hicks is outside ball three in an attempt to throw out Crawford. However, next time you plan a wedding, don't be afraid to do it when the Giants are playing the Astros. There's a pickoff attempt. Well, well, that would be maybe next year or the year after. Three and one to Hicks. And the walk. And that's the other thing Hicks will do. He'll take a he'll take a walk. So a lot of pitches in the first inning and Pitcher number 18. He had to pitch out of a bases loaded jam. He did, but here, very quickly in the second inning, he's got himself back up against the wall again. See Matt Kane's numbers three for ten. This is a bunt situation. Kane, a pretty good bunter. Should go to third. And it does. And Grinke is going to look to third. And now Kane is going to beat it out. Grinke didn't know what play was on. Wow. Kane's got a base hit. I mean, watch Grinke. I mean, you're supposed to come off and come straight. That's your route. If he had the assignment to cover the third base line. You would have kept Sean Figgins, the third baseman, at third. And that is a play. But on a play when you crash both side infielders, your first and third baseman, the pitcher has to come straight towards home plate. And once he gets the ball, he looks out of the corner of his eye, sees Sean Figgins, and he tries a miracle throw with nothing on it, and even Kane beats it out. So, again, the Giants for the second inning in a row load the bases. That's a head spasm right there. That is. So here's Pagan. Pagan spins out of the way. He bounced out to Gonzalez in the first inning. Yeah, the other thing too about that play is that is a hard play on your arm. Like running towards the dugout and throwing it as hard as you can yeah. behind you on one foot. Pagan hits a high fly ball to right, and with Puig's arm, this could be interesting. Crawford's going to tag, and uh, he's going to stay there. Now, with nobody out, you're not going to gamble. If that's one out, you might. Well, you know, it's interesting, Mike, because I thought he did not have any momentum coming to the plate. It didn't matter. He had no momentum, and this gives you an idea how strong this kid's arm is. Flat footed throw, just a little. Pro hop and a perfect one hop seed right to Butera. And that is a great example of the type of talent this young man has. And he is a legitimate five tool guy. Here's Hunter Pence. He did showcase one of his tools. Pence blooped a double down the right field line in the first inning. No balls in one strike. Frankie will now pitch for the strikeout. Pretty good curveball to open up to the bat right there. That is the same pitch he's going to try and strike you out with. 
His slider and curveball are very, very quick. All right, time now for our AT&T U-verse Rewind. We go back to April 6th, and this is a home run that Hunter Pence had against Grenke. He went the opposite way. That is a good memory, and that's our AT&T U-verse Rewind. Pence, center field. This has got a chance to fall, and now Crawford is going to go. And the throw is going to be late. His 10th slip. And the Giants take the lead. So Kemp tried to get something on the throw, and he didn't. He's got a fantastic arm as well. Strong and accurate. And you see the front foot give away, and that's that ended all the threat. Still a perfect strike. Only about a 10 hopper, though. So the Giants catch a break there and they're on the board. And Buster Posey will hit. By the way, they gave Kane a sacrifice fielder's choice, which I don't think is the right call. Yeah, I'm going to leave hit. I'm not changing it. They appealed to third. Like that throw that Grenke made, I and mean, he's still trying to take a little inventory with his shoulder. Well, shoulder, leg, and not sure exactly what it is, but you're right, he's taking a lot of time. And if we notice it, you got to figure the Dodgers are noticing it as well. Absolutely. They absolutely are. Buster Posey blooped the single into right in the first. And he lines this one down the left field line. Foul. Now this is the throw that Grenke made that was off balance. Watch him turn his body the wrong way. And right here, I mean, that's really an awkward throw on your shoulder. Why is that not a hit? It is a hit. They just mis miscalled it. I'm sure that will be challenged by the Giants PR department. Oh, and one to Posey. Into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Coming in to score is Hicks. Kane moves over to third, and it's 2 0. May, may have almost jumped a gun on that base hit. Yeah, I thought that was. I thought that was a little premature. I appreciate that call. All four hits now have been to the opposite field. Giant, Giants really, I, the fact that it drops is, is, is a big play, but the fact that he stopped it yeah. from going past him was a very good play by Puig. Buster might have had a triple and a half on that. So here's Morris, who struck out in the first. I believe he's going to see some breaking balls until he hits one or fouls one off. Why would you change? Well, that's why, because you can locate 93 on the hands with movement going into him. So he's seen four pitches. He's check swing three of them for strikes, and here he swings through a fastball middle in. I'm confused now if you're the hitter. And it's 0 2. He is not seeing that breaking ball at all. <laughs> 0 2 to Michael Morris. Got him, and that'll end the inning. Giants on the board twice.
2 0 San Francisco. All right, Dr. Kansas, it's Tom for Stack City. Our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Giants last eight games here at Dodger Stadium. Well, they're seven and one. Total run score: Giants 50, Dodgers 22. And those are our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Well, the Giants cash in against Grinky with a two runs in the top of the second. Kane goes out with a lead. It'll be Crawford, Figgins, and Drew Butera. So Crawford will lead things off. Crawford was not in the lineup last night with Bumgarner pitching. The big story around here before the ball game, and Don Mattingly had to do some explaining, and that was how could you not play Andre Ethier against Matt Kane? There's a strike call to Crawford. Andre Ethier's numbers against Kane go something like this 30 for 70. That's 429. And try as hard as Manningly tried. I don't think he succeeded in explaining. You can't explain that. You know one thing, that came was pretty happy not to have him in the in the lineup. Poke foul. It's 0 and 2. And it gets back to one simple thing. Under Ethier has always seen the ball great against Matt Kane. Now Carl Crawford cannot say that. I don't care how hot he is. High fastball one and two. And how many times have you seen a guy on a one for 24 and he faces a guy he's got on his on he gets three hits. Yeah. Good. Two and two. Dodgers lost an extra innings here to the Giants on Thursday, three to one, and then the Giants beat him again by the same score last night. Crawford fouls it back.
Only 10 hits in the game last night and in extra innings. On Thursday, only 11 hits in the game. Crawford. Morris. One out. Well, Tuesday, May 13th, is the Giants' annual food drive at AT&T Park, and it's presented by Visa. You can be one of the first 5,000 fans to donate food or $5 at our on-site collection stands in the plazas, and you will receive a free Giants tote bag, compliments of Visa. Now, all proceeds will benefit the San Francisco Food Banks. If you're coming to the game on the 13th, you can support this great cause. Bring some food or bring 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. Here's Figgins. Figgins takes a strike. Figgins on the year is two for 13. One ball and one strike to Figgins. Just off the plate. Kane five and eleven lifetime against the Dodgers, but two and three in this park. Three and one. So Kane certainly doesn't want to lose Figgins. Yeah, he got happy with that last fastball. He tried to reach back there. And at times when you do reach back, you will fly that front shoulder out. When you do, you, you drag your arm and you'll always miss up and into a righty, up and away to a lefty if you're a right-handed pitcher. Good again. Higgins takes a one-out walk. That's number 31, Drew You know, it's a funny thing when you have such a great rhythm going. You don't want any time out. You, you want you want to spend five days of your rotational turn to come up quickly. And for Matt Kane, I mean, he really had it going. And then all of a sudden, the finger cut. He goes on the disabled list, and that can set your rhythm back. Fickens can run a little bit, so Kane will keep an eye on him. He does not go, and Butera takes high. So Kane right now. Out of the stretch, try to make an adjustment to get into the strike zone. Uh, he's all of a sudden come up with a little push in his delivery on the two fastballs that walked Sean Figgins. And now here, this first pitch, get it in slider. He got underneath that. Got to get back on top. You can always look at the position of a guy's arm. If his elbow is below his shoulder when he's pitching, he's going to get pushed in his delivery. Now the runner goes. Sanchez throw on the money. Got him. Good throw. That is right on the dot. We're going to make that throw our Ford right choice. Everybody does their job. A nice job from Kane to unload quickly. And watch Hector Sanchez with perfect footwork and a strike right to the glove. Now Brandon Crawford, all he does is catch and drop. And that's our Ford right choice. One and one to Butera. See the jump that Figgins got. A little late, huh? Yeah, not a great one, but still, I mean, if it's not a perfect throw, he steals it anyway, despite a nice unload time from Kane. He was right at 1.25 seconds, and that's where you want to be, that or lower. Look out. Hector Sanchez just got rattled on the helmet. It's two and two. Yeah, that put him back on his heels. Hey, it usually happens in the first inning. Sanchez has waited now till the second. Yes. He's an inning behind. Watch his heels. They go right back on him. And Butera, the hitter, is also a catcher. Can definitely sympathize. Yeah, Carlson kind of caught him. Yeah, he got him. 
There is a brotherhood for the guys that wear the masks. Hunter Pence out on right field. And that'll end the inning. It'll be Sanchez, Sandoval, Crawford coming up. Here it's 2 nothing, Giants. Mother's Day present surprise her with Giants tickets to two upcoming games by purchasing the Mother's Day gift pack. Two games starting for as low as 29 bucks. That's right. Mother's Day gift pack will include tickets to the May 13th game versus the Atlanta Braves and to the Memorial Day game on May 26th when the Giants will take on the Chicago Cubs, which, by the way, is Beach Towel Day presented by Bank of America. So go to sfgiants.com slash mini packs and check out the Mother's Day gift pack. Here's Hector Sanchez. Sanchez drew a walk in the first inning. Pablo Sandoval on deck. And a swing and a foul into the glove of Butera. It's nothing in two. Mm, good. Save that for later. High fastball, one and two. Giants so far have done an excellent job of getting pitches out of Grinky. They have made him work. So that really slow breaking ball gets Sanchez. Time to log. On to CSNBayArea.com and decide the player of the game. Your vote counts. Winner will be revealed during Giants post game live. You can follow the action on the diamond like never before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and more. Giants in game live on CSNBayArea.com. Log on now and vote. Giants colors on. Sandoval struck out with the bases loaded to end the first. Here he bounces one to Figgins at third. And Figgins throws wide. And he throws up against the dugout. And you can almost feel the wince of Dodger pitching coach Rick Honeycutt. He knows how hard his pitchers had, had to work. And he really wants the defense to be clean. Sean Figgins with all the time in the world. Just gooses one right over the head of Adrian Gonzalez. And he actually caught a break. It hit the post right where the players go down into the dugout. 
So a base runner for free, and Brinke goes right back in the stretch. For for Brandon Crawford, who singled in the second. Swing and a miss by Crawford. Now we talk about the pitches that Brinke will throw you. Fastball with two types of grip, a curveball slider, and a changeup. That's if he throws every pitch hard, he's going to give you five different looks. But that doesn't really tell you what he's all about. He has amazing feel and touch with every pitch, meaning he can adjust speeds on all those pitches. So he can throw a good hard curveball at 78, and then he can take speed off it and throw you the same grip on a curveball, but it, it'll come in there at, at 70. And he can do that with the fastball, the slider, and the cutter. I mean, he has amazing feel. And because of that, it, it's just not an easy at bat because it's so difficult to time the different speeds and looks he can give you. Yeah, and like you say, oh, by the way, every once in a while, just throwing at 93, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I mean, he has enough good stuff to just try and outstuff you. But he can finesse you with everything that he has, and that's the gift that he has. Crawford hits a high fly ball into left center field. And Kyle Crawford makes the catch, so Hicks will hit with two outs. Okay, that was a nice <laughs> swing from Brandon Crawford. He saw that breaking ball and really got a lot of good back leg into it. That's what you want if you're a hitter. You want to have balanced swings. If you can get up there and get three balanced swings in every at bat, you will take that. And you will take your chances. There's a strike call to Hicks. Hicks drew a walk and scored in the second. Thing too about Grink, I mean, he's, the next pitch he's going to throw is 50 on the day, but just about all of them have been out of the stretch. Brandon Hicks is not enthusiastic about that last call from Mark Carlson. He thought it was low. Pretty good point. But we know it's a big zone, and the hitters do too. You got to protect, especially with two strikes. And it doesn't really matter how you protect. That's a cricket swing right That's there. That's fine. You protected. You live to see another pitch. Steps out. At first is Sandoval. He reached on a Figgins error. One and two. Two and two. So thank you. Literally is thrown out of the stretch almost the entire game. Tap to third. Figgins will get another shot at it. He'll go the short way. And that'll end the inning. No runs in air, one left. Granky will lead things off. It's 2 nothing Giants.
To tweet your photo using hashtag CSNBA fan photo. Name hometown for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It was brought to you by AT&T. This is Braden Leppington of Fair Oaks, California. He's a future Giants prospect. Plays first base. He's a pitcher. He loves Belt and he loves Bumgarner. And why would he love those two? Because he's a lefty and he throws with a batting glove on. Got a good game face going too. That Will Clark look. He's got a little noosler in him. It's two nothing Giants. <laughs> That's right. So here's Granke who can hit a little bit, and the first pitch is just inside, one and zero. Gordon and then Puig bottom of the third the next pitch for Kane will be number 40 2 and 0 oh. Kane right now is really starting to concern me about his his ability to repeat the arm slot it's kind of floating around here. Well, the other thing you have to worry about too is the finger. Now, if you have any pain in your finger, you will throw around that pain, and you feel it right as that ball rolls off the tip of your finger. I mean, that's right there at the last thing that that you feel, and, and it'll be something you you involuntarily will throw around. Well, and and maybe Mike, the fact that it may not even be painful, but if it starts to break open a little bit. Well, if it breaks open, you, get, you, you just have you don't have a feel. You have to come out. And that pitch isn't close. So. We mentioned that John Miller is in Las Vegas for his son Alex's wedding. Dave Fleming, he will be here in the top of the fourth inning right now he's getting yelled at by our boss Larry Bear <laughs> and he deserves it so here's Gordon so now we'll keep an eye on Matt King and so will Bruce Bochy and Dave Rigetti and a bunt and it's foul and it's 0 and 1 <laughs> Watching very carefully, Dave Rigetti. And there's more than mild concern in that Giants dugout. Strike to Gordon. It's 0 and 2 with Gordon and his speed. If you're an infielder, now you have to make sure you get one. It's, you may not get the back end of it. Looks like King is a little bit more consistent out of the stretch than he was the windup with his arm action. Tap slowly. Kane will hurry and they'll get Gordon. Frankie goes down to second. Nothing routine about anything when Gordon hits it on the ground. Well, if you ask me, would you rather have Frankie at second than Gordon at first? I say absolutely. If you have Gordon at first, he's going to be a third before long. Frankie, he's not going to be stealing anywhere if he's at second. Quig struck out in the first inning. He'll hit now with Frankie in scoring position. Ball high, one ball and no strikes. Again, underneath that fastball. 
started to erode in the second inning when he was facing Sean Figgins. He got out of it because of some help from his catcher Hector Sanchez throwing out Figgins, but he brought that inconsistency in his arm slot into this third inning. And the pitch that is giving him the most trouble is the fastball. One ball and one strike. Not having the problem with the curveball. And right now, the fastball is not his friend. That's a good 1 0 curveball here. Same pitch he threw Puig to strike him out on his last at bat. The 1 1 to Puig, swinging a bouncing ball to Crawford. Crawford, a tricky hop. He stays with it and he throws out Puig. And on the play, Grinky moves over to third. Well, that had to eat me up right oh, all over it. Man, did it Chosen ever. Number 13. <laughs> These really are the type of ground balls that give you an idea just how good a hands an infielder has. You're charging because you have to put some charge on it because of the speed that Puig puts on the play. And you get a little in between her. And Crawford stays with it right in the pocket, smothers it with the bare hand, an easy exchange, and Puig's out by a bunch, but that was anything but easy. The only guy I ever saw comfortable on that play was Omar Vizquel. He didn't, he didn't care. Me, I was like barfing while I was going after the ball. <laughs> no, not really a barf. Here's Ramirez, and he takes low, one ball and no strikes. Maybe a couple of gags and a few wretches, but not a full out barf. Probably slight exaggeration. <laughs> Foul. Ramirez got hit right on the elbow. He's got an elbow guard and Kane hit him right on the elbow. This is a one two count in his last at bat. It hits him on the elbow and kind of carries into his boiler. And Ramirez stood up there and acted like he's the first guy that ever got hit. One ball and one strike. Never acted like that because I was afraid they'd hit me again. I know. It's like uh, no, I'm going to go down to first and act like it didn't hurt. I mean, if King is trying to get him out inside, he may accidentally hit him again. And that was away from the target, and it's two and two. Yeah, you mean like that? Yeah. Right. That's where if you peek to see where the catcher is, you're going to get hit. You're going to walk right into it. Walk right into it. But that's just another example of, of how uncomfortable Kane is with the fastball. They set that target on the outside part of the plate, and it goes up almost under the armpits of Hanley Ramirez. Now they're set up away. Got him. And that'll end the inning at 93. Dave Fleming, he'll be in. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's 2 nothing Giants.
McDonald's two stories, and we're talking about Madison Bumgarner, a 1.87 career ERA here at Dodger Stadium. Now, that's the lowest among active pitchers. His last three starts here, a 3-0 and record, 20 in the third inning, 17 hits, four walks, and 25, 24 strikeouts. He loves Chavez Ravine. And that is our McDonald's two stories. It's 2 nothing, Giants. We're in the top of the fourth inning here to entertain you, my partner, Dave Fleming. <laughs> Wait till you hear all the entertainment. Coming from this corner of the booth. Kane against Greinke. Perfect fastball right there. Strike one. So a little concern with the arm slot for Matt Kane. The fastball just has not been his friend. And I think it has everything to do with that forefinger. Have a little chunk out of it. Yeah. And he's been looking at that finger as he's thrown some of his pitches. But he's made it through three innings. No runs allowed. He's going to feel a little stiffer tomorrow, too, than he normally would because he is throwing around that pain. You can see it in his arm slot with the fastball. Ball two. And when you throw a curveball, your release point, the last part of your hand that touches the ball is different than when you throw a fastball. The fastball is what's clearly bothering him. Well, that is interesting. Kane, who got a good bunt down his first time up. Helped the Giants two run rally took a pretty good swing there two and two. I thought they should have given him a hit. Well I put down hit my book typed in we, we have changed it. We think it's going to get contested. I, I have not changed it either. Now how could you call it a fielder's choice. He had no choice. But, hey after I saw the pop up that dropped. that should have been caught last night. You Darvish his perfect game. They called it an error. They called it a. I mean, they do that. They, they could do anything they want. <laughs> Strike three called. Fastball on the outside. That was that was controversial. In the end, it didn't turn into as big of a story as it would have been because down to their final out, the Red Sox actually got a hit against Darvish. I think it was seventh inning with two outs, and it was a pop up to right field between the second baseman and the right fielder, and it dropped. They didn't even touch it. That's a hit, and they ruled it an error. But. Uh, the play here today that took a hit away from that came not quite as controversial no. but as bad. I did not agree with the decision. Pagan bunts third base side foul. Cranky you can see the athleticism and everybody's always talked about that with him. He is so quick to get off the mound. Now, and I, I, especially when you're going to the third base side for a right hander because your momentum's going to the first base side so you got to regroup quickly and then get and then get going and he did so in a very superior way not many guys can do that and he's one of those guys you hear the stories of hand him a set of golf clubs he'll go out and shoot par give him a basketball he'll make 30 free throws in a row he can sort of do anything and, and you see it in his game too because he holds runners well. He mixes and matches so beautifully. He's pretty good. Oh, he's very good. Missed with the fastball there. I don't mind the bunt idea from Pagan. We don't see the Giants' fast players try that very often. We haven't seen many from Pagan. We almost never see it from Gregor Blanco. I think Gregor Blanco needs to bring that out. I mean, that's the greatest way to get hits when you're not swinging the bat well. I agree with you. Pagan to left field. Shallow. That's Crawford for the second out. Well, Zach Grinke has not had a, an easy inning. He had thrown 54 pitches through the first three innings. He and came both with identical pitch counts prior to the start of this inning for Grinke. So he's looking for a quick inning. It was sort of amazing how the first inning was so similar for both of the starters right out of the chute. Pence who has a double. Really just a pop up and a sack fly that scored the first run. There's that curveball. How many pitchers go from 67 miles an hour and every once in a while Greinke's curveball is that slow to 96. Oh not many. And we were talking about that earlier is that he's got such great touch with all of his pitches, which allows him to vary the speeds on every pitch. And we've seen 67 mile an hour curveballs, we've seen 76 mile an hour curveballs. And that's just touch. 
Hey, Brescia, Giants head trainer coming over to take a look at that finger from Matt Kane. So there is ongoing concern. 0 2. Pence, very defensive sort of swing. Ramirez just in time. A little hesitation almost cost the Dodgers, but there's the first 1 2 3 inning. 2 0 Giants. is presented by authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Well, the Giants are coming home, believe it or not. That's right, starting Monday, and they're going to host the Atlanta Braves for a three-game series, the 12th and 14th. Monday, Tuesday are both 7-15 games. The final game of the series is a Wednesday 1245 star baseball in the city. You need tickets. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets here in Los Angeles as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Two nothing Giants. And we're going to watch this fastball command for Matt Kane very carefully as he begins the bottom of the fourth against Adrian Gonzalez. I mean, it could be that he's got a short leash. I mean, the Giants don't want him to hurt himself. That was a first pitch changeup. If you look at the pitches that he's throwing, he's having good command with the changeup he just threw, the curveball. Those are pitches that come off other fingers than the forefinger. The, the fastball, because it comes off the forefinger, is the one that he's having problems with. Good changeup, strike two. That changeup is a circle grip. It comes off the middle finger. Remember, he had the cut on the forefinger, and he really is throwing around the, that little point on his finger, and it's causing him to get underneath. The fastball, and he's got push in it, and because of that, he's missing up. He doesn't have command of it. Tried another changeup, missed just barely. So what you're watching is a very gutty performance here from Kane because there are things that he's not allowed to do because of that cut. And it only involves the fastball, which is one of his primary weapons. That one hit back up the middle against the shift, but not this time. Adrian Gonzalez. Maybe saying to himself, finally. And that's four straight change ups, and on the fourth one, he gets a hit up the middle. Well, that's a problem. At some point, if you're not throwing the fastball at all, it's hard to have a lot of success. I mean, he's got other types of movement he can put on the ball that, that don't aggravate that, that finger, but, you know, the fastball, that's a, that's a weapon of his. He's throwing over 50% of the time. So we'll see. Lead off man aboard and Kemp coming up. Kemp has had good swings against Kane this season. Had the two home run game against him in early April. Hit a fly ball to fairly deep right field his first time up and there you go. There's that fastball up. 
that's a problem right now. Well, and the problem is not just that he's not able to command the fastball. The problem is that it also subjects him to injuring his arm. And that's the big concern that you have. You don't want to compensate for that discomfort with something else. That was a fastball. But they sent the target away and it went up above the hand. So they're just little indicators. And prior to him cutting his finger, we had seen him lock into a nice rhythm. And he was pitching so beautifully with just the fastball. He was hitting it on both sides of the knees with, with inside outside command. He was hitting it inside outside command at the belt. And it just put on a clinic with how to, to locate fastball and pitch with just the fastball. And he's not able to do that today. Middle infield double play depth, swing and a miss. Was that the slider? Yeah. So everything other than the fastball is looking sharp for Kane. That's because he's not throwing it across that, that little point on his index finger. It gets aggravated when he throws the fastball. One, two. Hit to short. Backhanded nicely. That's one. That's two. Double play. Take a look at the way he grips his pitches. And there's the fastball. Now that's going to come off right off the middle of the forefinger when he releases. And that's a four seam fastball. Same thing will be held through of the two seam fastball. It's going to come off right off the tip of the, the forefinger. Now there's a slider. That's going to come off the side of your forefinger and you, there's the curveball is going to come off your index finger and then there's your your change up that is also going to come off the index finger so the two pitches that are aggravating that point where he cut his finger are the, the two seam and the four seam fastball by the way if you ever need a ground ball to get a double play off of that camp throw him a hanging slider it worked there <laughs> it sure did it was a good one one and one fastball misses up and away to Carl Crawford with two outs and the base is empty now. But the beauty of Matt Cain is that uh, you don't see him sweat. Pagan out number three. So he gets through another inning even without his best weapon on to the fifth. Two nothing Giants. Sixteenth is Metallica night at AT&T Park. Members of the band will be at the ballpark participating in pregame activities, including performing the national anthem. A special event ticket will, you get will also 
include a ticket to the Giants Marlins game, a collector's edition's Metallica Giant inflatable guitar, and uh, a commemorative guitar pick set featuring Giants players and Metallica band members. I want to get that, I want to get that, I want to get that. So go to sfgiants.com slash special events and check it out. You want to get the whole set. Yeah, that'll be a fun night. Those guys are fun. Buster Posey, he's been a big part of this Giants offense so far, taking strike one from Zach Greinke. That hit he had in the second to turn it from a one-run inning to a two-run inning, knock in a run. When it looked like Greinke had a chance maybe to get out of it with no damage done, that feels like the biggest hit in the game so far. Strike two. That sinker from Greinke, he has used everything today. You're right. I mean, he is put on a clinic with all the pitches that he th throws, all of the, the speed that he adds and subtracts on each pitch. And he is in a rhythm now that has been his best rhythm since the start of the game. Jack's got a little fortunate in that first inning. Pence hit the pop up that dropped, then Posey hit the little soft line drive that fell in front of Puig, or Puig couldn't make the catch on. So it wasn't like they were hitting the ball real hard against it, but they had base runners, got him in the stretch, put some pressure on him early. Could take on the slider, two and two. Dodgers in this series have been very, very cautious with the way they've pitched Posey. Well, they knew he was red hot coming in, and they circled him as the one guy that they were not going to let beat them. It's that one foul. That was pitch number 70 from Zach Granke. Well, Jacks would love for this to be a high stress inning for him. Get that pitch count up. His spot is due up in the last of the fifth. You might even give Don Mattingly a decision to make. Very close call the ball. Trying to back door that two seam fastball on the outside corner. It has been called a strike earlier in the game, same location. That's why Greinke was walking out the mound thinking he had strike three. So he gave a little formal protest with his body language to plate umpire Mark Carlson. Full count here, three and two. The pitch is ball four. And a leadoff walk. Nice at bat. Very nicely done by Buster Posey. So there's base runner for the Giants with Morse coming up Saturday in LA. Morse has had a hard time with Granke. Well, he just has not been able to pick up the rotation on the breaking ball. And that is the pitch that's in his mind. And when that happens, you are going to be late on a fastball. And the, that has also happened in his. So he's seen six pitches and he struck out twice. Four breaking balls and two fastballs. Hit that one into left field base hit. So he wasn't going to wait around this time and Morris for the first time of the game makes contact. It's a base hit. Posey to second. Two on. Nobody out. He looks relieved. <laughs> Well, he had been a bit perplexed. I mean, two at bats, two strikeouts, six swing and misses. Oh, thank goodness. That'll make you a believer again. Yeah. I, I like the Coco Buddy slapped on Roberto Kelly. <laughs> he needed, needed a little affirmation. Well, now Hector Sanchez, 0 for 1, a walk and a strikeout. In a big spot. Giants up by two, looking for more. Foul ball, strike one. Hector's been a little late on that fastball. You start seeing Hector Sanchez get some more playing time with the injury to Brandon Bell, who was put on the disabled list today. Yeah, Bruce Bochy doesn't want to totally change up that the way he's using his catchers. So Morris is going to play a lot of first. But I think you're right, uh, especially against left-handers. Just about every time I think we'll see Sanchez catching Posey at first. This is what caused the injury last night. And uh, Mahalo 
the pitcher for the Dodgers said he threw a breaking ball that did not break. It hit him. Hit Bell on the left thumb, the top hand of his bat, which I, I've never seen a guy get hit there. He stayed in the game to run, and then he left after the inning was over. And they x-rayed it, and we got the bad news about him. 0-2. Oh, Sanchez kind of got a hanging curveball there and pulled it foul. And they, these are the moves that the Giants have made. It was a busy morning. So Kane activated to pitch today. Tyler Colvin recalled belt placed on the DL Contos optioned and Scudero to the 60 day DL which just opens up a 40 man spot for Tyler Colvin allows him to come to the big leagues. Giants have another decision to make coming up soon David Huff is getting healthy pitch well in a rehab assignment for Fresno another 0 2 and a change up good one strike three swinging. Could not lay off. So the strikeout with a runner at second base, nobody out. And he was pitching for it. He gets. Big first out. Here comes Pablo. Zonaval's 0 for 2, has struck out and reached on an error. Sean Figgins does not look very comfortable at third base to me defensively. He does not want to make that throw across the field. They miss Juan Uribe. The Dodgers do. And they're thinking about putting him on the disabled list with a hamstring problem. And yeah, they were thinking it was very mild, but here we are a couple days later, and it hasn't gotten any better. Curveball taken for ball one. And I do think if the Giants cash in a run. Or two in this inning. Don Mattingly has a decision to make when Greinke's spot comes up in the last of the fifth. And you're right. So that would be big for the Giants, leading two nothing. Pablo right back to the pitcher. Greinke, Ramirez, double play. Probably no decision to make. Greinke's going to bat in the last of the fifth. Two nothing, Giants. Credit Union, you can vote at CSNBayArea.com. Eighth season, the Comcast Sports Net All Star Teacher Program, recognizing Bay Area teachers that make a difference. The winning teacher receives $20,000 for his or her school. So go to CSNBayArea.com and tell us what you think.
Maury Wills is here today. They call it Old Timers Day. I prefer to call it Legends Day. There's Dusty Baker looking very good here with his family. His wife Melissa, son Darren. Dusty Baker talking with Mickey Hatcher. Mickey Hatcher will wear your ears out, by the way. He's doing it to Dusty right now. Kane against Figgins. Yep, yep. He can flat out talk. Good guys, both of them. Good baseball guys. There's so much connection between Giants Dodgers over the long long history of this rivalry. There aren't many who have a more direct connection to both than Dusty Baker. I mean, Dusty's a big part of Dodgers and Giants history. And Dusty Baker is fantastic for this organization as a player as a coach and as a manager. Ball two to Figgins. After the game today, this group of old timer Dodgers is going to have an old timers game. This is part of the game when they all said it's time for Dodgers baseball they do every day. Some a little more old timer than others. I mean, you got Eric Karros, Nomar, Daryl Strawberry out there. Well, they had some old timers too, I and mean, they had Tommy Davis, and Roy Wills, as we saw. They had Lou Johnson. There's Oral. Another Dodger Giant crossover. A little more history in the blue, though. Figgins up the middle, caught by Crawford. Out number one. You look at the, the outs that have been recorded today by Kane and the pitch that there you see Don Newcomb. And the pitches that Kane threw when he got the outs. An eight by slider, one by changeup, three by fastball. And usually his fastball is always dominant for the payoff pitch that gets outs. So he's just getting it done in a different way today. Trying to figure it out. Butera takes a changeup in for a strike. Well, give him credit because it's obvious that finger is still an issue. You know, it is an issue, but the thing about Kane, he'll ask him, How'd you feel out there today? Oh, fine, everything's great. Yeah. Man. And it's kind of the mentality he has when you go out there. You just make what you have that's working that day work for you. And you don't try and force, force feed a pitch that's not there. And he's got other weapons he can use. But I'll say this I mean, he really is digging into his bag of tricks today. Well, that was another example. That fastball, he, he just cannot throw it properly. He's underneath it. Yeah. And when you push it, you are always going to miss high. And that was an easy take, ineffective pitch. Butera strikes out swinging. That was pretty effective. When you get games like this, and, and it, it, it really is the type of game that separates a, a thrower from a pitcher. A thrower would have been out of this game two innings ago. But a guy that could pitch who has that mentality that he's going to make make it work with whatever he has out there can keep you in a game. And that's the beauty of a back game. And on the other side of the fence, Zach Brink is the same type of guy. These guys can both pitch. I think you also have to think ahead in this game and credit Hudson and Vogel Song and Bumgarner. This last turn through the rotation, lots of innings pitched as Brinke slaps one foul. But the result is the Giants bullpen is very fresh. So if Kane can't go too deep in this game, well, the Giants are loaded in the pen today. Uh, and, and that's not something that you just take for granted either, considering the, the schedule that they've had. They've had a lot of days consecutively, no days off. And to say that the bullpen's fresh through this stretch is, is saying something about the rotation. On one to Greinke, and you have to pitch Greinke like a real hitter. Jammed him there, pop up, back out of play. When Greinke came from the American League to the National League. It it felt right. I mean, Greinke should be a National League pitcher. Well, I agree. Simply because he gets the hit over here and he does it over there. 
spoiled that one. A little pop up. Hicks on the move. And a 1 2 3 inning. Nicely done by Kane. Gets right through the bottom of the order. Bottom of the order coming up for the Giants who lead 2 0. Tomorrow, right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, as the Giants and Dodgers will do battle in game four of this four game series, and it ought to be a dandy. Tim Hudson taking on Clayton Kershaw, a couple of aces doing battle at one o'clock. You'll see it right here on Comcast. Pre game live at 12 30. Complete Giants coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNBayArea.com with Giants insider, insider Andrew Baggerly, the home of your San Francisco Giants, is right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Those are two good. Dodgers pitchers right there. Yeah, Oral Hershiser on the right, Sandy Koufax on the left. Yeah. That is Dodgers royalty. Brandon Crawford leading off here. I think the new Dodgers ownership has obviously done a lot of things to help this franchise, but one of the best things is Sandy Koufax is here. He comes back around. Yeah. No question. I mean, he is as classy a guy as I've ever met. It's good to see him back here. Oral spooked him. Well, he does that a lot. <laughs> He's done it to me before. Oral now part of the broadcast team here in Los Angeles. So you see Don Newcomb on the left. Mickey Hatcher, he's going to make it a habit to talk to everybody. Yep, Don won't need to do a lot of talking. 0 2 to Brandon Crawford. It's a pop up. Carl Crawford. That's the first out. Both pitchers starting to settle in here. It really happened about the fourth inning. Both guys got through their first couple of innings, which is usually the case with good pitchers. They find a rhythm and then they just start mowing guys down. And it's going on right now. Now Brandon Hicks 0 for 1 doesn't really tell the whole story. I don't think he's had two long at bats, two good battles with Granke, and took a walk that was a big play in the two run second inning. Slider for strike one swinging. I mean, Hicks, the batting average doesn't look impressive, but he continues to do a lot of things to help this Giants team. Ball strike two. Uh, it's a slippery slope, though. Once you get under 200, I mean, your your world starts to change if you're a big league hitter. But you're right. I mean, he's really helped with the glove. And 
he's run into some home runs, which have definitely turned games around, which is what Bochy likes. One on Thursday night was huge. I mean, look, he's taken walks, he's played good defense, and he's hit for power. You do that as the eighth hitter, and you can be a good player, a solid player. Yep. I mean, particularly considering we just didn't know what to expect without Scudero, who was going to take the job, and how much were the Giants going to get there? Foul ball, still one and two. Uh, let's take a look at the grab. Hey, yeah. That is a good grab. All right, grab some pine meat. One and two. Check swing. Did he go? No. Ted Barrett, first base umpire with the no swing call. The uh, Bay Area native, Ted Barrett. The former boxer. Don't mess with Ted Barrett. No. That's good advice. He's the tough guy of the Major League umpires. Just inside. Granke wanted it. Well, another at bat for Hicks. This is the third in a row. Getting a lot of pitches out of Granke. Trying to go to the inside corner. Now we've seen that pitch call the strike as well. I think that one was off the plate in though. 3 2. Got him to chase. Strike three. Well, you say, why are they swinging in the dirt? Well, because they're not seeing it as a slider. They're seeing it as a, as a fastball. And the break on his slider is one of the quickest in the big leagues. It just explodes away from you. And by the time you commit to it and, and you get your swing halfway into it, it's gone. You're swinging it air. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, those are the same kind of swings we saw from Michael Morse, his first two at bats. Kane takes ball one. Yeah, well, Michael Morse has been swinging the bat well. You have a guy swinging the bat well like that, he's seeing the ball well. The way that he was swinging at those breaking balls, he was not seeing it well. Fastball just low. Two outs, bases empty in the sixth. The only two runs of the game scored back in the second. Foul ball. Yeah, we have a winner. Foul ball sweepstakes. And he's looking for a little guy. Found it. Nicely done. That's how you get a round of applause from everybody sitting near you. Strike two swinging. Well, I'm sure it meant a lot to that guy that caught the ball, but it means a whole lot more to that little guy. By giving him the baseball, you just may lock him in for life as a baseball fan. So I say that's a pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good thing to do. Kane strikes out swinging. So Greinke, another good inning. On to the bottom of the sixth. It is still 2-0 Giants.
Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, offering business and personal insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. Visit us at hefins.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Great look from center field back into Dodgers Stadium in L.A. Yasiel Puig and the Dodgers trailing the Giants 2-0 last of the sixth. Dave Fleming, Mike Kruko here on Old Timers Day in L.A. They got an Old Timers game after the big league game later this afternoon. And Mike, this feels like a big last of the six coming up because Kane third time through the lineup against the top of the order. Gordon Puig and Ramirez and it's just a two run Giants lead. Uh, and, and you're not understanding that either. This is big because of where they are in the lineup and who's leading the, the, the inning off. How about Tito Fuentes, Erwin Higueros, the uh, voices of the Giants in Espanol. On the SAP channel, you can hear Erwin and Tito broadcasting from L.A. A very crowded broadcast day at Dodger Stadium. Ball one to D. Gordon. Changeup just missed. All of them are full. But we get to be next to Ben. There we are. Ball 2 0. Oh. Uh, I bet the Giants' bullpen is going to get going. Uh, they're starting to stir. You know, we talk about big innings. This is a big pitch. One guy you cannot walk when you're in a closely played game like this one is a guy with speed. Might be time to get the chairs out of the way. Well, that fastball just not close. That pitch is not helping him. An easy take. And if you haven't been with us all day, Mike's been talking a lot about how that's the one pitch those two fastballs where the spot on the index finger on his right hand really affects the pitch. There's a called strike. And a lot of getting underneath it and having push which causes the ball to go up and away. And just throwing around that, that spot in his hand. 3 1. High ball four. Fastball misses and Gordon, who is such a terror right now on the base pass, draws the leadoff walk. That's a red flag for Bruce Bochy and Dave Rigetti. Puig was 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. He has been the hot Dodgers hitter though. And we saw last night the enormous power on a night where the ball wasn't carrying all that well to straightaway center field against Bumgarner. So a dangerous spot here. Puig almost came out of his cleats. Foul tip strike one. Yeah, probably would have been a bad idea to take a pitch when you have a guy out there struggling with his command. Get it in first pitch breaking ball. Of course, that's a pretty good pitch to hit out of the ballpark and hang a breaking ball. Yeah, you can't take that one. Now Hector Sanchez took that one off the side of the mask. So he's been dinged up today. You see Chief Machi getting loose down the Giants bullpen too. An old catcher coming out to check on his current catcher. Yeah, that one hurt. Hey, you always wonder what it feels like to, to get hit in the mask by a foul ball. It feels like getting punched. Now, this is one that happened earlier. Now, this is the one that just happened. That one almost got underneath the mask, kind of wedged in. Well, Buster. Was starting to get ready in case he had to get the gear on, but no, Sanchez is going to stay in the game. So he says he's okay, which is not surprising knowing Hector Sanchez. I mean, he's as, as tough a guy as they've got in that clubhouse. 
But if you're a base dealer, best time to go is when a guy's a little fuzzy. Yeah, well, Gordon is definitely that. He's already stolen two in this game, and the Giants have paid attention to him on the base pass, and it's almost like it hadn't mattered. And they also know he likes to go early in when he gets the first base. He didn't like to wait around too long. They may pitch out here. I mean, look at that. It's not even close. 11 more than the next closest in the big leagues. Gordon reached on a leadoff hit in the first and stole second and stole third. He's going. And not even a throw. No chance. Another steal for D. Gordon. It's not the tying run, but it does take away the double play possibility. Now once the ball got in the dirt, it was going to become almost impossible to get D. Gordon. So, in the mind of Kane, with a 2 nothing lead, your concentration really has to be to play. I mean, you, you say, all right, I have to take advantage of my 2 nothing lead here. I can't start walking more people. i got to bear down on the guy in the box. Machi is ready to go with the pin. Yeah. This next pitch will be number 85. Puig, that one runs in tight, the fastball. Sanchez scrambling to try to keep it around the home plate area. It can't be a real comfortable feeling for Kane against these caliber hitters, top of the order. Tight game getting late. The third time they've seen him. That's going to really surprise him at this point. Without the fastball, basically. There's Hanley Ramirez. He's on deck. Now you got to give Kane a lot of credit for what he's done so far today. Let's see if he can get through this sixth. That one is popped up. Off the end of the bat, Morse kind of got a late break, and Morse is not going to get there. My goodness. A gift hit for Puig. Crawford couldn't get back from shortstop, and now the Dodgers are set up. Yeah, this hurts. And I think the problem with it was number one, Morse plays back very deep. Former infielder, like a, a lot of former infielders do when they transition to the outfield. But off the crack of the bat, he expected more fly ball than what he got. And that's understandable given the guy who, who hit the pop up. But he just doesn't have that type of speed to make up for a bad first step. Well, we haven't seen it very often where his defense has cost the Giants yet this year. It was a worry coming into the season, and he's done a good job, but in a big spot. That puts Kane in a real bind. Ramirez takes inside. Fastball 1 0. Again, away from the target. They set it outside at the knees, and that ball goes up and in. Well, not that the Giants are conceding the run, Gordon at third, but. They would love to find any way to get through this sixth inning with the lead intact. Well, Ramirez had a pretty good cut. That might have been a pitch to hit. One and one. Well, that's a hanging slider. I mean, he got away with one. There's two in this inning. One to Puig, one to Ramirez. Right here, you need to get lucky. And they will give up a run to get a double play. You see that middle infield at double play depth. Ramirez 0 for 1. They do also have to pay attention to Puig. He's a threat to go. And you do wonder if Puig might take off and almost dare the Giants to throw to second base with Gordon, the runner at third. 
Ordinarily you think don't risk a, an out on the bases the heart of your order down two runs. Ramirez a pop up. And we'll see if a giant can get to it. Sanchez back there. Sanchez can't catch it. It was in his glove and he dropped it. Well, I mean, that's two outs that they've not been able to cash in on here. You look at back, not looking to the sun. You can see the shadow is falling out towards first base. So the sun not an issue, just really dealing with the distraction of unfamiliar territory close to that small fence. So Hanley Ramirez gets a second life. Yeah, I mean you can never call that an easy play because of that fence that Mike's talking about. The catcher's got to toss the mask, get back there, but he got there and the ball was in his glove. One and two. They will not charge Sanchez with an error. Here's the pitch in the dirt, blocked by Hector on the slider. The Giants defense has been a big part of the Giants success on this road trip. And in this inning, some defensive mistakes. The crowd starting to come to life for the first time, maybe all afternoon. They will throw to third. And if you're going to go to step off at third base, you have to throw it now. No more fake the third, throw to first. That has died. Yeah. It's a different. We were so used to seeing that fake move over the years. It is a difference. Two two up and in with the fastball. A walk would load the bases for the cleanup hitter. Could be the last pitch. Last batter for Kane, no matter what. We'll see. Three and two. Puig not going, and it's ball four. Way outside with the slider. And now the bases are loaded. Bruce Bochy's coming out. Appelt joined Machi warming up in the bullpen. And with Gonzalez coming up, I'm guessing we'll see Appelt out of the bullpen. I believe you're correct with that. Well, there comes Jeremy. Giants are making a pitching change when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and great experts.
but trying to hang on to that lead here in the last of the six. Kane is out. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Jeremy Affelt inherits a very tough spot. Well, he's the guy you want in a spot like this because he's a guy that gets a ground ball. And he's been outstanding. Through 10 games, no record yet, no ERA. Just eight base runners and 10 strikeouts. So the league really hasn't hit well against him, either righties or lefties. But with the good fastball that'll go low 90s with sink, a big curveball and a, and a fork ball. He's got three ways he can get you to put the ball on the ground. Matt Kane is a spectator now and hoping that this Giants bullpen, which has been so good, been the best bullpen in the big leagues through the first month plus of the season, can help bail him out. Defense did not help him in this inning. Pop up that just landed in no man's land in left center field. And then another pop up where Hector Sanchez up against the side fence could not catch it. We'll see if the Dodgers take advantage of that. Adrian Gonzalez, their cleanup hitter with nine home runs against Affel. Bases loaded, nobody out. He's faced Affelt a lot in the past and he's had some success against him. First pitch is low. And the numbers head to head. 23 at bats. That's a lot against a reliever. Eight hits and some extra base power. When Gonzalez was at his peak in San Diego, he was a great lefty on lefty hitter. A 1 0. Browns that one. Into the defense. Hicks to second one. Crawford to first. Double play. Well, that's exactly what they're looking for. Gordon does come in to score, but two outs. And for the moment, the Giants still in front, 2 to 1. The beauty of having a guy that can throw strikes and get a ground ball exhibited there by Jeremy Affel. Huge. Well, I mean, you really have to have a guy like that. Now it's up to Matt Kemp if the Dodgers are going to tie this game or more. The only runner left out there. Is Puig at third? Giants have that shift on in the infield to the pull side for Kemp with two outs. That one right there, fastball strike one. Man, has Jeremy Affel been good? You see the shift, it's definitely a, a pitch of the pull with Hicks, the second baseman. Playing over towards the bag at second. Sandoval, the third baseman, on guard the line at third. Curveball, ground ball, base hit. They kind of hung that one, and Kemp took advantage of it. The Dodgers have tied the game. And the way that that Kemp took that first pitch, I think he was sitting on that curveball the whole time. Big curveball, good balance through the swing, and finds a hole. New ball game. Here is Carl Crawford, lefty against lefty. NFL will pay attention to Kemp at first. Uh, it really is steal time for a base dealer. I'm, hey. I'm not sure if Matt Kemp qualifies any longer. Well, he's got three in the year. He's been thrown out a couple times. I agree with you. He's not the base runner he was early in his career. But you're right. If he's ever going to try, this would be the perfect spot to try. Ball one. Well, Afro got that double play ground ball coming out of the bullpen. But the Dodgers with the two out hit by Kemp have tied the game. Crawford. Ground ball. Nicely picked by Brandon Crawford, and he throws out the Dodgers left fielder. 
but the Dodgers have tied the game. Kipes coming back over to the TV side. After six, Giants and Dodgers, two to two. Please bring your attention to Dodger Nation for the answer to today. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. For the Giants, two runs, five hits, no errors. The Dodgers, two runs, four hits, one error. It has been a duel between Kane and Granke. And uh, the big swing of the bat, Buster Posey, a couple of uh, knocks. He has an RBI. D. Gordon has been the offensive threat for the Dodgers. And that is our Toyota game summary. 2-2, top of the seventh here again, Dwayne Kuyper. All right, Mike, and it'll be Pagan who takes a ball. One ball and no strikes. It was the top of the order that got the Dodgers back into this game. Now the top of the order for the Giants. And Pagan is going to wave at this one. One ball and one strike. Frankie is getting close to that 100 pitch mark and threw a lot of pitches early, but he's been pretty good after the second inning. Got a big double play off the bat of Pablo Sandoval in the fifth inning after he walked Posey and Morris singled. Pagan slices this one foul. It's one and two. Pagan is 0 for 3 against Granke. He came in pretty good numbers, 4 for 9 lifetime. Now 4 for 12. Pence and Posey. Seventh inning. And he rolls it foul. Talked about how important it was for the Dodgers last inning with D. Gordon leading things off, their leadoff hitter. Well, you can say the same thing here in the top of the seventh with Angel Pagan leading off. And your leadoff guys are your table setters. Pagan's fourth time that he's seeing Greinke, so he's got a plan. He knows what's working, what's not working. And a 2 2 ball game, a leadoff hitter getting off base, that changes everything. It's a big at bat. Hit into center field. Kemp's got a beat on it. One out. So mm -hmm. McGon retired, and that'll bring up Pence. Talked about Grinky, who's had 19 consecutive games where he's allowed two or less runs. And that is a feat that has. Not happened in baseball since 1914. Pence. One for two. He had a sacrifice fly in the second. 
And he takes outside one ball and no strikes. Cranky has given up seven home runs. One of those to this guy. And at the knees to even the count. Seven home runs in 44 innings. That's a lot. You should have 10 every hundred innings. Frankie is due to hit third in the bottom of this inning. And the 2 1 to Pence. Up the middle, right at Grinky. Perfect example of how a pitcher that squares up is your coming to the plate fifth the infielder. Oh, well, you're right. It, it always gets back to how you finish. Are you balanced? And you can see how square he is. He can go left or right. Definitely in a position to protect themselves. Balls hit back up the middle. There really isn't. Anything that he doesn't do well. That's what managers and pitching coaches look for from swinging the bat to being able to lay down a bunt. Old base runners. One ball and no strikes to Buster Posey. Buster's been on base three times, two singles and a walk. Rubbing up the baseball. See if he challenges Buster Posey. Well, then that answer would be no. It's three and zero. Oh. Might throw that curveball three and zero oh too. Mr. Posey, he's going to look for one fastball, one location. If he gets it, he's going to try and unload it. And he wraps it foul. <laughs> Ricky threw that and he ducked. I think he thought that thing was coming right back at him. Right, let's take a look. Watch, Ricky. Look out! Maybe he was worried about somebody else than himself. It could have been somebody winging beach balls at him out of the upper deck. It's beach chairs. You know, a gun shot here at Dodge Stadium. Three and one to Buster Posey. Posey with the base hit. Third hit for Buster Posey. And here's more. So Morris now facing Grenke for the fourth time. And he had a rip and it's 0-1. And I think he was sitting on breaking ball, which was a good plan. First couple of bats he struck out twice on six pitches and, and he didn't come close to touching a breaking ball. His last at bat, he got a first pitch fastball and he spanked into left field for a base hit. So no surprise that Grinky went back to the breaking ball to start this at bat off. Well, he might just pound him with breaking balls. I like that. One ball and one strike. There's the defense straight away in the outfield and pretty much straight away period. A little slight pull at the second base position for D Gordon.
Well, that was 92. Well, that's a mistake, and that's a gift. And the two outs. Zach Greinke put himself in the hole here by allowing Buster Posey to get to second base for free. Catcher, number 29, Hector Sanchez. Trying to jam him with a fastball, and it just heat seeks right into his ribs. And at 92, with some sink movement on it, that is going to leave a mark. So very quickly, Rick Hunnicutt, pitching coach with the Dodgers, is going to come out and talk it over. This conversation is going to be real simple. It's going to say, well, who do you want to pitch to? Hector Sanchez has had better swings against you than the guy on deck, and that's Pablo Sandoval. You have an open base here, so you can decide who you want to go to. So, Mark Carlson will break up the rock pile. Well, I'll say this about Hector Sanchez. He's walked and struck out twice, but his at bats get better as the game gets. As the game gets closer and as it gets closer to the end of the game. And we'll see if that's a fact here. With two outs. And Posey at second and Morris at first. Well, you're right. He does like these at bats. On the ground. Never mind. Side retired. Giant strand of pair. It'll be Figgins to lead things off. It's 2 2. For that news, here it's a 2 2 ball game. Affelt stays out of the mound. Brian Wilson getting loose. And it'll be Figgins. Remember, Figgins is a switch hitter. You see some of the former Dodgers. Old timers saying, Take me out to the ball game. Sean Figgins. They'll head back to their seats. They will play a old timers game after the game. So they'll go into the old. Visitors Clubhouse and start strapping it on. The Giants fans appreciating all the years Dusty Baker was in a Giants uniform. We played with Dusty in 1984. Yes, we did. Good teammate. We had a lot of fun with Mr. Baker. Yeah, good teammate, good coach, good manager. The only time I didn't like Dusty Baker is when he played for the Dodgers. 
This is bunted foul. It's really funny is how things change. I look at him now. Everybody looks at him as a Dodger. I don't. I don't either. <laughs> Those years never happened. He did a lot of good things in that Giants uniform. And that's how he'll be, be remembered by Giants fans. And he earned their respect. Think about his first year as manager. 1993. Yeah, just win about 100, what, three games? 103 games. One ball and one strike to Figgins. Figgins called on a strike that Sanchez couldn't catch. It's oh. one and two. Umpires love that, don't they? Yeah, it's like everybody from behind thinks the ball was in the dirt. <laughs> they will definitely. Hoot all over a catcher when they drop it. Making me look bad. This gets away. Sanchez has got a shot and he throws him out on a nice play by Buster Posey. That was not easy. The excitement put right back into the strikeout. Catcher number 31, Drew Butera. Had Figgins realized a little earlier that it had gotten away, he'd have made it. Yeah, he completely turned his back on the play. If he goes right out of the box at the get go, it's not even close. And there's the nice play from Posey digging the one opera out of the dirt to the back end. You never quite figure you're going to get a ball in the dirt at that angle as a first baseman. That's true. Here's Butera. Butera takes a strike. I watch Buster Posey. Yeah, I mean the only time you get a ball like that is from the bat boy between innings when you need another ball. <laughs> Maybe a pickoff play by the catcher, but that's about it. Butera is going to have a hit, and Pence is going to try to cut it off, and he can't. So Butera with a one-out double. Puts the lead run in scoring position. And Justin Turner is going to hit. Nice job. But inside and out, go right through the gap and watch how this thing scoots. So, a pretty much automatic double off the bat of Butera. There's one out here at the bottom of the seventh inning. That's a nice piece of hitting right there. Two for five lifetime coming into the series for Turner against Afro. Brian Wilson will pitch the top of the eighth, finishing off his warm ups. They have reconfigured all the areas around the bullpens on both sides of the field. It's really pretty cool for the fans to watch guys get warmed up now. Cool for the Dodger bullpen. <laughs> Now, if you're a Giants pitcher, that's, <laughs> that's a choral group that's absolutely going to hoot on you in 65 part harmony. Turner out of play down the right field line, one ball and one strike. A no decision for King. Granke can still come up with a decision. Rogers score here. Yeah, Ricky extends his streak of games where he's allowed two or less runs to 20 for this outing today. Foul at the plate, one and two. I 
think that had everything to do with him being brought over here to the Dodgers. Hits this one on the ground to Hicks. Hicks stays with it. So here's Gordon. And now, if you're on the infield, you have to speed things up because you got a runner at third. Well, in a tight ball game with a runner at third base, this is probably the worst guy to have hit if you're an infield. He can push bunt, he can drag bunt, a medium ground ball, the shortstop he can beat out. I mean, he's putting pressure, and he's tough to strike out. Yeah, plus, there's a lot of pressure on Hector Sanchez. As that fastball is high, 1-0. Hicks is playing Gordon like he's playing the infield in. Now he moves back a couple of steps. Crawford knows he's going to have to hurry the throw. If it's hit in the hole, he has no chance. Blocked, 2 and 0. Oh. Pitching coach talking it over with the Brinkley. There you see Wilson finishing off his throws. Pace hit. And it'll be a double for Gordon as Butera comes in. And it's a 3 to 2 lead for the Dodgers. And really, that is. What a guy like D. Gordon will do. I mean, he shortens the coverage and the, the range of a third baseman. Because of his speed, you have to respect the bunt. If it's back to middle positioning, they probably get him. And he is a weapon. So for the first time today, the Dodgers lead. So Machi is going to come in. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back. Taking the lead on a base hit by D. Gordon. The pitcher now for the Giants will be Gene Machi, 18th time that he has come in. He is a 5 0 record with an 0 5 3 ERA. One of the leaders in the National League and wins, I might add. 13 strikeouts in 17 innings against three walks. He has been outstanding. Fastball a little bit, 90 slider. Football from some other world. Football. 
That has been his strength. Coming into a situation where it's not a strikeout situation. But he will have to pay close attention to the guy at second because he Gordon already has three stolen bases. And the only reason to pay attention to him is if he does get the third base, it may cause you to have to elevate that fourth ball if you're trying to throw it as a kill pitch to get clean. And if you're throwing it in the dirt, it's not an easy pitch to block. I really expect E. Gordon to go early in this count just to be able to take away that ability to bury that fourth ball in the dirt. And a runner at third base will do that. It will make a pitcher bring it up just a little bit. And sometimes that's all it takes. It's another way that base dealer can affect the game. Puig takes a strike and it's only one. Ball land in front of Morse for a base hit in the sixth. Down the left field line. Morse giving chase. And he's not going to get it. And it's a fair ball. And it's a ground rule double. So just inside the line. And now the Dodgers lead by two runs. A little bit of elevation again. He goes at him with the fork ball. And Twig goes out and hooks it. And how fair was it? Well, a line shot. So here's Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez is 0 for 1. By a pitch in the first, walked in the sixth. And a strike in its own one. That's where it hit, right there on the line. There was not a whole lot Michael Morse could do about this one. Ball of the strike to Ramirez. Two out hits in this inning by Gordon and Tweed. By the way, the run that Apple allowed, that's the first run he's allowed this year. Outside. Two balls and a strike. The 2 1 is up and in three balls in one strike. Got under that fourth ball just a little bit. Tupachi just trying to figure out a way to get out of this hit. Giants in the dugout. And the walk. He 
We have not seen this at all from Machi this year. And immediately Dave Forget is going to come out and talk to him. It's going to be a simple suggestion. Get on top. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service. It is celebrating 12 years. Watch every out of market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. SFGiants.com. So here's Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez is one for three. And he takes low. One ball and no strikes. Dodgers have the kind of offense and they can steam really in an inning. And now the pitch. So we're going to drive into center field. Pagan spinning around and he's going to make the catch. As he backpedals up against the wall and that'll end the inning. So this is a nice play by Pagan, really to keep the Giants into the game. It's 4 2 LA. Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by eSurance. Seven and a half minutes could save you on car insurance. Click or call. Here's a 4-2 lead for L.A. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil brake tune-up and brake experts. And there you see the numbers for Wilson. It has not been easy. And look at the walks. Nine walks and nine and two-thirds. He's been all over the place. Still throwing quality stuff, mid 90 stuff, cut, sink. Sandoval with a base hit into center field. And that's the loudest contact that's come off his bat in the series. And maybe that's the swing of the bat that gets him going. Giants have been trying to be patient with him. 
first pitch fastball right over the plate at the belt. Boom right back up the middle. So the Giants just like that bring the tie and run to the plate. So here's Crawford Crawford's one for three. Turner is now at third. And Crawford takes a strike. Hicks on deck. It's 0 and 1 to Crawford. And that pitch is wide. Good sink on that two seam fastball. And then with a short lead. And this is off of Butera. It's one and two. Three pitches all the same. Two seam fastballs. The outside corner that's a little but that runs away from Crawford. You see the last three games, seven base runners and two and two thirds, and three of which have scored. Does, however, have four strikeouts. The stuff's good, You're just making location mistakes. Bit of an overthrow at 94. So it's two and two. Got him. Wow. That's a generous strike. He finally throws a cut in the outside corner. We talked about the zone that Carlson has. I mean, he will expand, but. It's not a strike. It's a rough and bad of what that is. So here's Hicks. Is the newest giant now is in the on deck circle. That would be Tyler Colvin. So here's Hicks. 0 for 2. But he will not be afraid to tie this game up. He will not. Swing and a miss. That was under the hands of Brandon Hicks. This is the eighth. And now deals. Swinging a shot into left field, a base hit. So Sandoval will get to third, and here comes Colvin. Yeah, it may be that Hicks broke his bat, but he got the barrel out enough to get it over the head of Turner. Uh, he's strong enough to be able to throw it out there in the outfield when he does get jammed. See the numbers for Colvin with Fresno. And he got off to a horrible start, so he really has caught fire of late. Last 10 games, 10 for 32. Former first round pick by the Cubs. He has credentials. And he's not afraid to, to try to knock one out of the park either. Just like that, he fouls it out of play. So you. Come out of Triple A and you come out swinging the bat. Well, they really wanted him to make the club out of spring training, but he had, had some back problems. Took him off, got him off the field a few times. And when you're fighting for a job, that usually is the different difference maker, and it was. Out of play, nothing in two. The thing about Colvin that you like is his bat stays in that strike zone a long time. It's a flat swing. 
Wilson stayed away twice. Sandoval singled. Crawford struck out. Hicks singled. Pagan's on deck. Colvin behind 0 and 2. One and two. He really got underneath that one. Saw Wilson in a two strike situation to Crawford after he established the movement away. Brought a little cutter in the outside corner. It was called strike three. Now Wilson knows he's getting some width in that strike zone. He has not thrown that pitch yet. It may be right here. Two and two. Again, underneath the fastball. Nine runs at first. We're in the eighth. Wilson two and two to Tyler Colvin. Got him. So he goes back outside with two seam movement. And he gets the swing through strikeout. Center field number sixteen. So here's Pagan. Pagan's 0 for 5. Pagan is 0 for 4, I beg your pardon. He didn't take too many 0 for 5. Two and 0. Had great arms in center field and in right field. He had a below average arm in left. If you keep running two seam movement on the outside corner of Pagan, he will go to left field. He takes. So it's three and zero. Oh. It may be that Pagan will take one. And now they're loaded. So a four pitch walk. Pagan had never had a hit lifetime against Wilson. Pence. Pence is one for three. And lifetime against Wilson. Pence 0 for three with two strikeouts. But now with the walk, the tying run is at second base. So you get a hit to the outfield, and you can tie this game up as Rick Honeycutt is going to come out. He's going to try and pour some calm on to Wilson. In the meantime, they're going to get some activity very quickly in the Dodger bullpen. Chris Perez, the sinker baller, is getting heated up. Perez is one of those guys that he'll take eight throws to say he's good to go. And all that is is a pep talk. They work, sometimes they don't. Most of the time, the guy's not even listening anyway. Well, a veteran like Wilson, I mean, he's, you're right. He's trying to figure it out. Yeah. He's not, his own best pitching coach. The manager comes out, that's maybe a little different story. So here's Pence. Pence will not be afraid to jump on the first pitch. And he takes a strike in its own run.
Sandoval, Hicks, Pagan. Oh, and two. He's digging deep. That was 96. They hit the outside target. It comes across the plate up and in. Turns out to be a pretty good pitch. But after a four pitch walk to Pagan, now a quick 0 2 hole for Hunter Pence, who's looking for his first hit ever against Brian Wilson. And Wilson walks off the mound after that one. He thought he had strike three. 96. That's, That's the same close. pitch as Crawford. One and two. Do not take it again. Popped him up. Side retired. Giants leave him loaded. They left him loaded in the first. It's 4 2 Dodgers. The bottom half of the eighth inning time now for our Honda player of the game. And that distinction today will go to the Dodgers second baseman, D. Gordon, who has had three stolen bases, a couple of knocks, the big swing of the bat, a double in the seventh inning that gave the Dodgers a lead for the first time today. And he is our Honda player of the game, D. Gordon. So Juan Gutierrez is the new pitcher, 4-2 lead for LA. When it's time for a change, thanks Speedy. Oil change in auto service, your oil change tune-up and brake experts. Juan Gutierrez, the new pitcher now for the Giants. He's in his 15th game, 1-1 with a 3-1 ADRA. Strikeout walk ratio, 5-1, outstanding. Hard thrower. We've seen mid to high 90s fastball with, with curveball slider change up. Job trying to keep it at a two run deficit. Here's Kemp. Kemp tied the game up with a base hit off of Affeld in the sixth. And this is hit out to right field. Hit pretty well. It's starting to carry, and it is gone. Kemp goes opposite field, his fifth of the year. And it's 
five to two. Always has had strength to the opposite side of the field. Stays inside it beautifully. Back spins it. And this is a big man's home run. Hunter Pinch just flat out runs out of room. So here's Crawford. And Crawford looks at a strike. For Gutierrez. He gives up his third home run of the season. Crawford takes wide. One ball and one strike. Crawford lines at the left. He's got a base hit. So Gutierrez would like to restart this inning. I mean, through five innings, the Dodgers had two hits. That last one is now their ninth. So they have strapped on their hit shoes here the last couple of innings. Here's Ethier. Ethier hitting 248. And Crawford goes, and he's going to steal it easily. Uh, you always can tell when a pitcher gets rattled. His concentration for that runner at first base goes right out the door. High leg to it, very deliberate, and not a whole lot that Sanchez can do. He tried to throw it out from his knees, but Gutierrez is rattled right now. The look to second, and Ethier takes one wide, one ball and one strike. Going to slow down when Gutierrez comes in. He is more than deliberate. Buster Posey is going to flip to Gutierrez. Ever bother you when you're a hitter when you had to hit off a guy like Don Stanhouse or somebody who was really oh, slow? Absolutely, it drives you nuts. <laughs> I mean, look, it really didn't bother you once you get into the, the box, but it's getting into the box where you want to get into a decent rhythm. But it just never happens. Which no hitter should ever admit to it because then more guys would do it. <laughs> I, know, I think you just let the cat out of the bag. But we do see a lot of guys slow things down when runners get on base. But with Gutierrez, I mean, it's whenever he gets out there. Nobody on. Still the same pace. Very slow. Infield is in. And Butera takes high. Butera, a one-out double in the seventh. He eventually scored the lead run, which was the third run. Pitch in for a strike. 
Right back, another breaking ball. It's 5-2, L.A. with Crawford at third and one out. And now it's a one and two. <laughs> Matt Kane and no decision in this game. Granke's got a chance for a win. You get those starting pitchers that can get to the seventh, they're going to get a decision one way or the other. Something that Steve Carlton told me a long time ago. He says you need to be ready to get you, you want the, you want wins. They're in the seventh, eighth, and ninth. That's where you get your wins. Pagan's coming in, tagging his Crawford. This throw is going to be up the line. Butera with a sacrifice fly. Six to two. Let's see if Don Manley then sets Jansen down. And here's Turner. And Chris Perez started to heat it up with a little more gusto. See what the Giants have done on this trip. Well, first seven games, they've given up two runs in 25 innings today, four runs in two and two thirds innings. They have been remarkable. You know what that's called? A hiccup. Although, I look back at the sixth inning, a couple of plays that maybe could have, should have been made. Allowed the Dodgers to tie the game up. Well, the Giants gave the Dodgers five outs. A pop up that should have been caught in left field. A pop up that got dropped behind home plate by Hector Sanchez. And in this on this road trip, not only has the relief pitching been unbelievable, the defense has been unbelievable. They haven't had breakdowns. And by the way, no errors were charged in that inning. This has popped up. Sandoval calling. And he'll make the catch to end the inning. So the Giants just made it tougher on themselves as we go to the ninth. They need four to tie and five to take the lead.
is Sportsnet Central today after Giants Post Game Live right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We get Giants highlights, 49er draft highlights, Raiders draft coverage, and you'll see all that plus more on the AT&T Ubers Sportsnet Central right after Giants Post Game Live. Six two, Dodgers leading. When it's time for a change, thanks Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and brake experts. So Chris Perez, the new pitcher for the Dodgers, you're going to see a high-octane high sinker and a slider. Two pitches, go get him. He's had some problems with his command. Eight walks, 15 innings. And a strike to Buster Posey. Three hits tonight for Buster. Three of the eight hits for the Giants. This has popped up. Shallow right field. Can anybody get there? And Yasiel Green does with a great catch. Yeah, that's a remarkable play. Every time you see this guy, you know, he, he amazes you with just pure athleticism. And I didn't think that a right fielder had a chance. And look at how far he comes over, going right into the wall. And not only catches it, puts the brakes on. That's just. That's Bo Jackson like is what that is. Well his ability to stop is what amazes me. Wow what a play. Somebody else is about five rows deep. With two broken knees. So here's Morris. I can't believe I just saw that play. Morris is. One for three as he swings and misses. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Outside and low. 1 and 2. Not happy with. The score, but you know what else I'm disappointed in? What's that? The NFL draft. I was hoping maybe it'd go another 10 rounds. <laughs> really? Why is that? Is that? It's the only thing that it has actually been on TV. It's a swing and a miss by more. So here's Hector Sanchez. Next, catcher number 29. Sanchez on the ground to Gonzalez, and that's going to do it. So game three in this four game series it goes to the Dodgers and they do it. They do it from the six inning on where they scored all of their runs. After the Giants had led two nothing through five. Yeah frustrating game for the Giants in that they left 12 runners on base twice they left the bases loaded. And they could not capitalize on it but uh, you know, this is one of those games they weren't supposed to win. Final score Dodgers six Giants two. The Insurance Giants post game live is coming up, but first let's go to the Sportsnet Central Studio.